Hello everyone, this is Muhammad from DevCast. So this is going to be my first YouTube video. And I'm, I always wanted to start a YouTube channel related to programming and tech content. My goal of this channel is to teach a new technology while building a cool project with that technology. So in today's video, we will be building a fun Python project. So I've actually built this uh, program three years ago, but I always wanted to make a video about how I built it. So this is going to be a very simple program, less than 100 lines. And what this program essentially does is it allows you to run simple shell commands on your system via text messages. And it's also important to note, I won't be using any third party SMS APIs such as Twilio. And the reason I wanted to build this program was to uh, do something cool or pro um, and try something cool with like the power of texting. And in order to build the program, you're gonna need knowledge of Python. Um, I would say beginner to intermediate, such as understanding of variables, how to use a different library within your program, and also how to write functions. And you're also gonna need basic knowledge of Flask. And lastly, you will need your favorite text editor to write the code. So without a further ado, let's dive right into the video. Let's get started. Um, first thing first, I'm gonna create a directory and we're gonna name this program called server text. And I've created a directory called server text. So I'm gonna CD into that. And next thing I'm gonna do is um, activate the virtual environment. So I have this command handy here. So it's gonna create a virtual environment for me. And I'm just gonna activate this. So now we have activated. So now I'm gonna use, I'm gonna install all the libraries that we're gonna need for this project. So first things first, pip install. And uh, we're gonna need Flask. And the next thing we need is pip install and sci to HTML. By the way, great tip uh, for ZSX user is that if you type the few parts of the command and if you hit up, arrow it just brings the command that matches those characters so yeah so once we do that and then we're gonna create a new file called index.py and I'm gonna open up my code editor here so now I'm in my code editor here so let's import all the libraries we're gonna use for this project here so I'll do import first imaplib and next we're gonna use um, email, actually I can import all these libraries at once. So I'll just put it here, import, uh, email. So we're going to import imaplib to, you know, connect to our inbox and email to decode email messages and sub process. So I'll import it in the next line. So sub process to, um, run a shell command and time command to add a bit of a delay to pick up the latest email message. Next thing we're going to need here is flask. So from flask module, import flask. And lastly, from and side to HTML, import inside to HTML converter. So what this converter does is it pretty much takes your shell output and turns it into HTML, which can be viewed on the web via Flask endpoint, which I'll show you. So let's test out our Flask app first here. So I'm gonna create a Flask app. So I'll just name it app and we're gonna call it stand here Flask and then hit the, add the following line and then we're gonna create a decorator app dot round and let's just say this is the index route and I'll name a simple function index and it just returns hello world. So we have our first flask route. So before we actually uh, run this uh, file, um, we're gonna have to add a few more lines. So if name equals dunder main method, um, we got to add the code here and app dot run for our own uh, 
for our own betterment we can add for our own um the we for our own uh for our own selves we can add the debugger statement debugger true so if anything goes wrong black ass can help us debug so yeah uh, i'll save the file and then let's run it so so python and index.py as you can see it's running on debugger mode and i'll just copy the url And there you go, we have hello world. So our Flask is running. Looks like we have successfully started a Flask app. And now it's time to code the logic. So I'll write up a function, which I'll name it get text. So we'll pass an argument such as mail, which is your email account and the password of the email account. And then you'll pass in number where you'll be texting from. And I'll show you in, a, uh, in the demo how we're gonna be using this. And lastly, the IMAP host. So first things first, we're gonna be connecting our email account using over using IMAP. So I'll just say IMAP equals to IMAP lib dot uh, IMAP for underscore SSL. So it just connects the IMAP using the SSL. And the next thing we're gonna do is the IMAP dot login. So we're gonna log in into the email account. So I'll just pass in mail and pass. And once I do that, we're just gonna select the inbox because that's where we'll be looking for the message so inbox so inbox. So once we do that next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do like a search so I'll create to the result and data and then we say imap dot uid and I'll just say search and I'll just say none and I'll just say everything all so once we do the search so this is going to give us the the list of uids which comes in bytes so like message ids pretty much so you're going to get a list so one thing we'll do is we'll i'll create a new item a variable called inbox underscore item and i'll just say data so what it's going to do is so you'll have to so you'll have a list and if you return result, you will just get the status, which says the connection is okay and data contains a list of bytes. So I'll just split those bytes with, and once I split the bytes, I get a new list of bytes and we're just gonna grab the first one, the recent one. So if the most recent, so I'll just say most recent equals to inbox item. And then I'll just say, the minus one so it's always going to return the the recent one so once we get that and now i'm going to create a new variable result two and data um actually i'm not going to call data because it's going to be redundant so uh, so i'll just call it email data equals to imap dot uid so i'll just say fetch and i'll say the most recent one so it's going to fetch the most recent message and then just say we need that in raw format so for that we're going to use rfc 822 so once we do that and now i create a new variable called raw email now i'll just say raw email and then we're gonna grab the raw email from the list by saying email data so it's it's, it's like it has um it's most probably like an array so we have the first item but in Python, you know, lists are arrays. So I'll just decode that into UTF-8 since it's still in bytes. So we decode that. And then I'll just name a variable called B um, since I'm not really pretty good at variable naming. So I'll just call it B and I'll just say email dot message from string. And we'll say grab the raw email and then use the default message policy. So email dot policy dot default so it's going to grab the message turn it a string and then make sure it uses default email policy so we're good here so now i'm going to create a list i'll just call it mail bytes and now we're going to grab the payload um, but first we're going to write an if statement it's more sort of a check so i'll say b if it's from the right person which is going to be which is going to be a number in this case and 
if b dot multi part is true like if it has multiple parts so so if that condition is true what we're gonna do is so i'm gonna iterate over the this this list so i'll say message in b and then i'm gonna append it to the list we just initialized mail bytes so mail bytes dot append and i'll just say message dot get underscore payload and we'll put a flag say decode this is true so it's going to decode it again and then lastly we'll return return the decoded message here from the list so mail underscore bytes equals one and then we'll just decode the first item so you could i could have picked zero but the zero is like the top part of the email the first part is like the message and the third part is like the the photo of the email so you also want to take um, note of that so we'll say decode into utf8 else return saying that no message received so yeah so we have our function here let's just test this out so in order to test this function i'm gonna comment this code out for now so i'll just say i'll just put a print statement print and i'll just say get text and for here i'm gonna add in some variables so i'll just say mail and another variable i'm gonna use is pass and another is the number and lastly it's going to be the imap host so i'll just name it imap server so for this example we'll be using gmail and over here you can add your number but with the gateway sms gateway so in my case i'll be using t-mobile for this demonstration and for my SMS gate, gateway is tmomail.net, but I will link the code in the description and I will link all the SMS gateways for your carrier and then you can use it accordingly. So, and email where you'll be sending the email. So for this demo, I'll be uh, using a temporary email, a, a temporary Gmail account and then with the password. So yeah, let's test this function out and see how it goes for now. I've added my details for each argument to pass into the function. And now let's just test it out. But before we test it out, we made a small mistake and it's you, you have to add parentheses here and now it should be good to go. So now I'll head over to my terminal here. And as you can see, I'll just run the command Python index.py. And that was the latest message that I sent. So now we'll head over to the flash. But first, I'll uncomment this out. And I'll comment this port. I'll actually take that out. But now we're going to write another function. So this, what this function does is it's going to take in the command that we're going to send into email. And it's going to grab by this get text function. And it's gonna run and display as an HTML on the Flask um, endpoint, the route that we just wrote here. So I'll name this function say def command uh, underscore to HTML and just pass in the argument command. So that's where we use um, insight to HTML mod, uh, uh, library. So I'll just say command equals so we'll be using sub process to run it so sub process dot run and we'll say command and make sure the shell out is true and it's grabbing it's capturing the output is true as well and make sure the text 
if argument is also true. So we have that part done. So I'll just name another variable called convert conv and I'll just uh, initialize anti JSONL converter. And next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create an anti variable saying we take a string and we join the command output. So I'll just say uh, sorry, command dot the standard output. So now we have a string and I'll just say HTML equals the con dot convert and we'll say answer. We're passing that and then lastly we're gonna return HTML. So now we have this part done and now we're just gonna add some stuff to our the flask route. So first things first, um, I'll run the get text function. So I'll just say command equals get text and I'll just say mail pass, uh, oh sorry, mail pass number and I'll just say imap underscore server, right? So I have all my arguments in the file above and lastly what i'm gonna do is so it's gonna get the command and we are just simply going to return this function so i'll just say and pass in the command so now it's time to test so i'm gonna send a text message from my uh from my t-mobile number to this email and let's see if you get to see the shell output on the web uh, on this um, Flask uh, URL uh, when we refresh the page. So now it's the demo time. So I have sent the command to the email and from my phone. And let's see. So I'll head over to the terminal and I'm just gonna run the program. So it's serving and loading as you can see this was the command I wrote it was an echo saying my current shell is the shell variable so just for a live demo I'm gonna run another command maybe uh, psox so psox and let's just say I want to grab uh, firefox so I'll say fire fox so I just sent a message from my phone to the email address and in about 10 seconds, I'll refresh the page. So let's test it out. Oops, looks like it's nothing showed up. Let's run something else. So let's just simply run PSOX. I'll refresh the page and there you go so as you can see here everything displayed here for let's just run another demo here um, maybe let's just run um, curl HTTP and then we're gonna curl Google's page so w So I just texted that command from my phone and within two seconds, I'll refresh the page again. So it looks like we're getting Google's HTML source code here. So yeah, this was the demonstration and I hope you guys enjoyed the demo of the fun, cool program we have just created. And I hope you guys got to learn something new. And if you liked it, make sure to, if you enjoyed this content, and want to see more make sure to subscribe and like the video it just encourages me to create more cool stuff but yeah this was my first video on youtube and i hope you guys enjoyed watching something fun that we just created and if if there's anything you want to know just comment down in the comment box and you can always reach out to me on twitter but yeah i hope you guys enjoy thanks